Hey, 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 welcome back to my channel. In a couple of hours, I'll be flying to Lisbon to meet an artist whose name is Yan Bei. He's a Chinese artist living in Portugal. I'll be showing you more about his art later on in the video. Well, I'm going to meet him and make him a case study on his art, on his um, art business. It's because I think he's facing uh, the biggest challenge that many of you face as well. That is, as the title of this video suggests, that you don't really know how to talk about your art write about your art to get the message across to your audience. I think there's nothing worse than having your audience in front of your art and they go meh because they don't really know what you're trying to do there, right? It's like all these wonderful, excellent ideas are trapped inside of the body of work, inside the canvas, sealed tight, and they just don't really understand you. And for the case of Yan Bei, uh, he doesn't speak uh, the language yet, so he can't use uh, self-help books like this to start trying. And I know many artists say, a picture is better than a thousand words but there's nobody stopping you from writing that thousand word with that picture so you have 2,000 words, right? I better get going, not to miss my flight. I will be talking to you guys a little more about Yan Bei and his case on the way. Let's go. All right, so we checked in our bags. We are waiting to board the plane in the airport. And by the way, this is Jo. She's from Singapore. She is an artist. She also works in advertising. She has a passion for making art and writing. Yes, hi guys. So we're traveling together to CM Bay and to visit Arco Lisbon Art Fair. And with her experience in advertising, we hope to come up with some tips and tricks and some solution for Yan Bei to be able to communicate his art. And making this video, hopefully you can also learn using these tips how to write better about your art. But before jumping into today's case study, I would like to introduce a little bit about Yan Bei. Also, she hasn't met Yan Bei, so it's necessary to show her a little bit of what Yan Bei does. Um, Yan Bei was born in 1963 in Beijing, so she's my homie actually. In 1988, he graduated from the Capital Normal University of Beijing. So if you know Normal University means that he was trained to be a teacher. So he worked as an art teacher mm -hmm. for like 10, 12 years. And in the turn of the new millennium in 2000, the economy uh, bloomed in Beijing. So a lot of things changed. The Olympic is coming just around the corner. So he decided to have his own business to make some money using what he knows. So he started an advertising company. So that's actually in your field. Yes, definitely. So that was pretty cool when I first heard that. <laughs> yeah. He also did some uh, public art, landscape art. You can imagine that it's uh, quite a good business uh, with, with the Olympic just coming out around the corner. Definitely. So he made uh, decent money so he could afford giving a better opportunity to his children. So he moved his whole family to Portugal so his two kids can go to international school, can experience a different culture, and he could focus on his art. Because in his 20s, he was uh, teaching, in his 30s, he was making business. Finally, now, like, he's uh, early retired and his kids are in school. He had all the time to make his art. Throughout his life, he also was making art. So in his studio, you'll be able to see like he has hundreds of artworks already made. And also the portfolio, um, you will be able to see. Actually, I'm curious. Have a look of his art and tell me what you think. This is the first time Joe is looking at his art. I think that there's a lot of um, Chinese calligraphy. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the style, that's the given. Uh, but also at the same time, there are like markers, kind of um, very similar to like fingerprints. The theory is called fingerprints, so uh, okay. <laughs> that's good. That means, uh, you know, out well. uh, yeah. <laughs> then every piece has to be an individual because all of our fingerprints are different. So you see he has um, text oh. written about him. Mm -hmm. by uh, famous curators, mm -hmm. but those famous curators are Chinese. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of things when they translate to English is lost in translation. Yep. So this is also a main uh, challenge he's facing when it comes to communicating his art. Mm -hmm. This looks like koi fish. Koi fish in waters and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's what yeah, traditional that's Chinese <laughs> painters do. Yes, yes, like, yes, yes, yes. Basically, if you see watercolor mm -hmm. in traditional Chinese 
paintings. If it's not a bird, it's a fish. If it's not a fish, it's a tiger. If it's not a tiger, it's a horse. If it's not a horse, it's girls. It's, it's also quite typical. Tigers are, and, and horses are like the best zodiacs. I'm just saying I'm a horse. <laughs> <laughs> Those are wonderful for intercultural perspective, yes. but it's very difficult to communicate because mm -hmm. he is exotic and he is trying to bring something traditionally not recognized in contemporary art in Europe. I don't know, he's obviously having some uh, disadvantage at start, starting from zero, moving to a, a complete new country. Yes, but in terms of technique and style and in terms of him being an individual artist, I mean, of course, it's very, very clear and it's very, very strong. I'm looking forward to actually like, like meeting him and see like how he is because usually when you see an artwork you can't tell how the artist is and like when you have that persona coming out and they do what they do it becomes the full story sometimes it's like half and half stories so when you merge together it's very good in less than two hours and a half you will be meeting him yes <laughs> arrived at Yan Bei's studio and this is his uh, private museum where he's showing his art using let's say one word to describe the space you see the art you see the personality what would you use there are so many layers it's like an onion you got mm. peel it by the different layers mm. and then you find out even more and so interesting you can do it a lot um in, in different ways so after talking to him i do feel that i understand his problems better and i have pinpointed his main pain point. I would say it's quite obvious that he doesn't speak the language. So the language is the biggest hurdle to his success in a foreign country. And the second thing is the cultural difference. There are some things embedded deep in the Chinese culture. It's very natural for me. Joe, as a Singaporean Chinese, didn't get completely right away. For example, he was explaining to us the bamboo painting um, where you can only see the bamboo leaves, not the bamboo stem. For Chinese, a bamboo without stem, it means man without spirit because bamboo itself stands for the resilience of mankind, the persistence. Without the stem, it's basically a bunch of leaves just crowded doing nothing without knowing where they're going. And that is to criticize the modern capitalism society is destroying the traditional values, is making us losing faith and losing whatever that we actually needed. <laughs> and you, you didn't get that? No. The main thing is, for example, if I look at bamboo shoots, I think of, yeah, pandas. Oh. I think of, um, <laughs> I think that, that continuation of like saying that you need a certain kind of rigor, a certain kind of bravery. If there's more sub, um, subtext towards it, maybe I see it in a slightly different way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about this topic of this video is to write about your art. So the whole point is you want to get this message across, mm -hmm. right? But it's gonna be difficult because we are talking about hundreds of years of you know history. You know, it's uh, e even in school. How how many years did you have to learn history, right? So it's like you know, twelve years of schooling. You know, you, you can't just explain in a hundred words. But then sometimes you don't even have a level zero idea. But the, the difference between level zero and level one is so high because level zero, you know nothing. Level one, you go into it and say, yeah, I kind of like this. I want to try a little bit more. I want to know a little bit more. I want to like put my face inside that. It's up to you, right? Like how much you want to absorb and like get it. But at the end of the day, it does take like um, two hands to actually clap, to have like certain baseline information to actually feed the audience and having the audience to have like a little bit of an interest so they can tie it all together and that will make so much sense. It completes the whole picture, the story even. So I do like the point that you mentioned is that the real um, job of writing, the piece of writing about your art is to get people to take the initial first step to become interested. 
Then there's another thing that I noticed that he was showing us the portfolio, the book that we also previously showed. There are a lot of、uh, famous curators from China who had written about him, and those texts were in Chinese, and they were translated into English. And if you read it, you notice that it's a piece of translation. That is always kind of inevitable. But then I realized that this famous curator in China isn't famous at all overseas. Because he wrote in Chinese, right?、Uh, that's basically, I think, the third problem or pain point that he's facing is that he's switching system. It's like Windows, right? Mac. He's switching system every time he switches. It he can't just take the previous、uh, points and then take with him. Like it's almost like playing different computer games. I think maybe one of these points could actually be passion points.、Mm. So passion points are like things that might be similar、mm. to、um, what you like, but it's not the thing that you like、um, directly. So the subject matter that we are talking about right now is actually calligraphy, but、um, maybe we like to drink tea. Or tai chi, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or tai chi, and they are kind of all in a similar culture, but then. You drink tea、um, in the Chinese teapot doesn't necessarily mean that you would definitely know the strokes of calligraphy if it's not in the most、um, natural sense, like with the the font and everything, right?、You're、like ah,、oh, this is just some black ink. But then if someone comes to you and say that hey, this is calligraphy, I was like ah,、oh, that's cool. Oh, you have some teapots. So there is like、um, you can do a narration of different passion points that tie in together,、um, so that you have other audiences that are really kind of. Um, inset with like some of the things that they like, which is a little bit similar, and then can tie it in together and be like, ah,、oh, why don't you try this other thing? Yeah. Yes, he's trying his best.、Mm-hmm. Like、um, in a couple of hours, we're going to the setup of just Lisbon for his booth, and he is investing money and time and energy and trying his hardest and his、mm-hmm. best he could to promote and to bring awareness, give exposure to his art. But obviously,、uh, there are some pieces of the puzzle that is missing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why we're going to、uh, kind of、uh, brainstorm together this afternoon and come up with some feasible steps, tips, and tricks for him and for many artists、uh, in front of the computer right now, like you, who want to、uh, promote, who want to bring people to not only you know to know your art but also to love your art. Where do we find these people? <laughs> Let's go and find out. <laughs> Just got here, just Lisbon. It opens tomorrow. Yanbei is busy setting up his booth, and I will be showing you the preview of the show. At the same time, I will be telling you six tips on how to write better about your art. Now let's try.、Uh, I'm inside the venue. It's kind of noisy. I'm not sure how well it's gonna be picking up my voice, so I'll use this as a microphone. Let's go from the beginning. Tip number one. The artist doesn't have to be the writer who is writing about his or her own art. If you don't have a good command of the language, it's going to take you years until you have the good command to be able to write something decent. So what you can do, the fastest, easiest, quickest, and cheapest way, is to hire a very young writer, like on Fiverr, Upwork, those kind of micro gig websites, or you can also just go to a local university or art school, look for. A PhD student who is、uh, majored in art history or things like that. It doesn't cost you a lot of money, and you can have immediate results. And my tip number two is also、um, kind of related to the tip number one: is that don't look for a famous curator or someone who is very renowned because. You know they might not be that interested in、uh, young artists like you.、Um, so choose someone who really is passionate about your work, who fall in love with what you're trying to do there, and I think it's gonna give you a better result because readers can see if this person is passionate and truly、uh, meaning it, or just paid to do the job. And my tip number three is that you don't have to just write about your art. 
please also do write about your life, yourself. I know many Asian artists, European artists, are very shy about telling their own personal journey. But I think it's very important because it explains a lot how you get there, why you're doing what you do, and the whole picture would just make sense if you are willing to show a little bit about yourself, your you know personal life, private life. And my tip number four is that you better prioritize the searchable content rather than the traditional media or local regional content. Like the case of Yan Bei, he had、uh, some publications on local newspaper. That's great, and he is quite,、uh, let's say, a, a local star because、uh, there are not so many Chinese artists in Lisbon. So he's like, you know, referred to as the Chinese artist in Lisbon. But his kind of art might be perceived、uh, better、uh, in other side of the world or in a different region, different country, in a different culture. So it's better to let people find him, prioritize unsearchable content. So when people look for、um, fingerprints art, Chinese calligraphy art, his work will pop up、uh, on top of the search engine, so he can get、uh, more exposure and find the right people. Not just the numbers, but the kind of people that are already loving the kind of art he's making. My tip number five is always publish on your own artist websites. Because if another newspaper or website is publishing about you, you don't own the content, and they get all the traffic. And if you want to edit it, you update the story, you can't because you rely on other people to do the work for you. If you have it on your own website, you are the webmaster. You have full control over what kind of content you're putting out there. And my last tip is kind of difficult to do, but I think it's worth trying. That is tip number six: do a crossover or outreach. Try to mesh up your story, your art discourse with another、um, niche. Uh, for example, like、uh, previously, I talked with Joe. You know, if you're talking about、uh, Chinese calligraphy, maybe talk about Chinese tea, <laughs> maybe talk about、uh, Chinese history or other things, so that. People are interested in the、uh, next niche that is related to the kind of art you're making. Could also be potentially interested in your art. So this way, you're not just uh, uh, kind of stuck in that very small niche of the very specific things that you are making, but also、um, having this outreach,、um, so that you can reach more people. Therefore, get more chances of、um, having people know about you and falling in love with your art. All right, so、uh, that's actually all I want to say today in this video about how to write better about your art.、Uh, let me know if you have some difficulties or particular suggestions, tips and tricks. Please do share with the community below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, and、um, I will be covering Arco Lisbon. I will be covering Just Lisbon another day. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and see you. In the next video.